First, this is a disclaimer. These are my opinions based off of my experience and my comparison of other things. I'm a skilled idiot. I have no means a professional. These are just words of advice from a fellow RC enthusiast. Take that as what you will. Enjoy the video. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the playground. Glad you could stop by. So I've wrapped up the build of the Element Enduro, the Builder's Kit 2. So I was going to do, you know, the traditional like, oh, here's a time lapse and, you know, stuff. Um, I'm not. Um, basically, I have way too much other stuff to cover of, you know, what to look for and what not to do um, to worry about doing a time lapse. So this is going to be a couple part, um, not instructional video of how to do it. This is just recommendations based off of what um, I did as far as assembling the kit, issues I ran into and how we overcame them, and also some uh, weirdness with the kit and the instructions. All right, so real quick, this truck, I believe this is going to be a very solid driving truck. Um, I think the materials that Element is using, um, these high glass filled um, plastics, they're very tough, they're very sturdy, there is just a little tiny bit of flex in this whole chassis, and there's not a whole lot to the chassis, so that's very impressive. Um, overall, the fit and finish of all the parts are really good. Um, other than having to cut stuff off the trees and you know, trim little bits of stuff, you know, that's fine. It's a, it's a builder's kit, I understand. Um, otherwise, everything went together really, really nicely, um, except for inconsistencies in the instruction manual. But as far as the actual truck and the fit and finish of the parts, um, I give it a strong A. Um, I believe once you're able to get this out on the trail and bash on it for a while, you're going to have a hard time breaking this. Um, assembling it, whole different story and we'll dive into that all right guys we're back and so i'm going to take a quick once over of the vehicle from front to back uh, just to give you an idea of what everything is in here and some of the upgrades so one of the upgrades and it's hard to see uh, well it's almost impossible to see so basically they have upgraded this front servo mount so this is the old front servo mount so i'm sure you could probably mount this in the back somehow and use this as like a rear winch mount if you wanted to, but they do include kind of the original style, I believe. Um, this new style has extra webbing in it, uh, much thicker than the uh, other one in the kit. So that looks to be an upgrade. Um, the servo plate, I'm not sure if that was in the original, but they give you this block out plate. If you're not putting in an additional winch, that'll keep a little bit of extra crap from flying up into your truck. So that's nice. Um, you have the behind axle steering, which I believe was in the original one. Um, we'll get into this in a minute, but this step in the instruction manual is about as clear as mud. Um, in this kit, you get the aluminum panhard mount. Um, anytime you can get a solid mount to the chassis for the front end, um, that will help out in especially high load situations um, to keep the front end from shifting around unwantedly. Um, you get the team shocks. Um, and there was some weirdness in the instruction about those we'll cover, but these are the upgraded shocks. Um, you get the high clearance link mounts. So you can see you're going to be dragging axle or drive shaft before you're hitting links on this. So there is a lot of clearance in this and, you know, it's hard to see, but these are the upgraded factory team ones with the nice, uh, I don't know if it's a Cerakote finish or whatever, but it's a nice like bronzy black kind of color. They're nice looking. Um, functionally, it's not gonna do anything more for you than you know a chrome one will, but they look nice and they don't stick out quite as much. Um, the ball ends or the rod ends seem to be of a nice pliable, but fairly tough plastic. Um, the kit itself has a ton of um, high, strength plastic in it it's i don't know whether they consider this their gray plastic um, but it's a, it seems like a high glass um, filled plastic it seems very very tough um, so there's a lot of that in there um, this center skid i like a lot 
Um, instead of having screws sticking down and everything, you know, it uses these little um, long 16 millimeter grub screws that are inset into the chassis. So there's literally nowhere for anything to get hung up except for the existing screw holes here. And you should be able to glide over anything with that. Um, axles seem nice enough. Um, the plastic shafts seem a little thin, but um, nothing different really than any other kit. But the actual connections up here seem to be really beefy and really strong. Um, but there are some uh, quirks about putting these onto the truck that you'll need to know about. Uh, the behind axle steering is nice. It gets this steering rod out from in front of the front end, uh, so you're not bashing into your steering. Um, you're just going to smash into the pumpkin. <laughs> cool band. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that is a cool feature. Um, what else? Um, as far as I know, that's about the only upgrade. Um, I did notice in the old instructions, it looked like there were um, metal gears inside the transmission. So your big, big broad gears um, inside uh, were metal. Uh, these are plastic in here. Um, it still offers the overdrive as stock. And then you can obviously change out gears to change uh, overdrive ratios or leave it one to one front and rear. Uh, battery box seems to be same um, from the original and again I don't have the original kit I never built the original kit but um, this seems to be the same uh, seems to be fairly weatherproof if you have the room I would suggest putting your receiver up on something uh, put something underneath you know half inch thick and then you can raise that receiver up to where you're just at the very top that way, if you do go deep water running with this and, you know, it starts leaking in there, hopefully any water will be trapped down the bottom and not your receiver, not just sitting in a pool of water. So that's just a tip. I didn't do it on mine. I don't, um, this isn't going to be my truck, but hopefully it's weatherproof enough to keep everything out. And um, if they do decide to, you know, run this down the middle of a river, you know, that's kind of on them. Uh, so let me get into some things that were not included in the kit and I feel maybe should have. So obviously electronics aren't included in the kit. So the motor I had to supply, the speed controller you have to supply, your receiver and radio system you have to supply. Um, you will also need a couple of three inch extensions depending on the length of your leads off of your servo and your ESC. Um, 280s have a decently long um, receiver cord as well as the servos that I buy, um, but both of them required a bit of a plug-in to route them around and then put them into the box correctly. Um, the big thing that this does not come with that I feel like um, Element is being lazy and stupid to not include is a pinning gear. Um, it calls for an 18 tooth pinning gear, um, which is a vital component to connect motor to said transmission. Um, technically, you mount the motor to the um, motor mount, but it just goes wee because there's nothing connecting it. So it requires an 18 tooth pinion um, to be stock. You can put whatever you want to in it. Um, but, you know, and there's going to be naysayers out there be like, oh, you run what you want to in these. Um, but honestly, if you're building a kit with stock transmission ratios and stock drive line ratios and stock drive gear ratios and the front and rear differentials, you're going to put, sorry, you're going to put whatever it calls for in the manual into this truck. I think it's an asinine thing for them to do to not include a $4 pinion gear into the kit. Um, disclaimer, it does say it in little teeny tiny print on the box. I'll show that. Um, and I did miss it when I purchased it from A-Main because they were kind enough to tell me it did not have an 18 tooth pinion in it. But, um, yeah, I missed that. So as I'm putting this together, I get to the step of the instructions here that clearly show to install the 18 tooth pinion gear. There is nothing indicating that it's not included in the kit except in the old version of the instructions, which kindly tell you in that step, hey, there is no pinion gear included in this kit. So that was very disappointing. I tore everything out of the trash can um, I had next to me. 
I tore everything out of the remaining bags that were ready to be, uh, that were still ready to be assembled. I actually opened up the other kit and started tearing into bags to find out, hey, there is no pinion kit in either one of the, or pinion gear in either one of these kits. So I went on about my day and continued building. Um, this build actually took me two very long, frustrating nights to build. And, you know, again, I will give the truck credit. The truck seems to be rather nice, but the instructions made this the most frustrating kit I have ever put together. One other thing that I've noticed. So in the original builder's kit, it appeared to have either an identical front bumper mount and rear bumper mount. But in this kit, they have changed the bumper mount. And I don't know what they've changed it to. Because the normal kit takes the kind of standard, um, you know, plug it in and here is a bumper. You know, the front works fine. And I had bought these Vanquish bumpers to put on here because they're nice and sleek, low profile, and they're gonna fit my build really, really well, I believe. So, you know, it fits, it, it'll adjust just perfect. Um, go to the back. Um, element, how the, how do you put a bumper on? Do you just, you know, zip tie it on? Like, you know, you, this doesn't make sense. I've never seen a rear bumper mount like this. So, you know, I'm probably going to have to order a original version one bumper mount to, you know, mount a bumper. That kind of pissed me off. All right, guys, I'm going to walk through the manual real quick and just show you a few things that I found frustrating. So each step is laid out with chassis build bags one and two. And, you know, it moves on to, you know, transmission build bags, whatever. And in each step, they cutely named as gates one, two, three. So, you know, it works. You know what step you're on, you know what part you're on, and you know what bags to use. That's perfect. Um, the problem I have with this is I believe gate one should have been gate one and two um, because there's an awful lot of stuff packed onto this, this one step. And it would have been much clearer if they had separated out this and this into two separate steps. So you could have bigger pictures because you know it took a lot of effort to figure out where these screws were going through this plate into this chassis into these rails you know you basically have to you know it, and it's the, the text probably comes out clearer over the phone than it does in person but you know some of this stuff was really hard to read and you know this piece right here that goofy rear bumper mount that they have now um you know, it goes on a very specific way because I figured, you know, there was something you would have to actually attach to it to mount a bumper to at some point, but it doesn't seem to be. But anyway, that goes a very specific way. So I had to actually take a picture of my phone and, you know, zoom in to see which way up and down that is. And the, the image is so poor in here, it's a grainy, crappy image once you blow it up. Anyway, we move down to step two. So, you know, step two is a little bit more clear because you already have all this parts attached. So, you know, it's put a side rail on and then, you know, attach these parts. So that's not terrible. Um, and you have step three, you know, put the side rails on. So, you know, you have this whole ginormous thing here for putting on the, the sliders. And then, you know, it moves on through the chassis build. All of that stuff was fairly clear. And then we move on to the gearbox build. So all in all actuality, the gearbox build, while there are quite a few bits and pieces on each step, they are clearly laid out. And really I had no issues with assembling the transmission. Um, so, you know, you get all the way down here, we're in gate three, the gearbox build, bag four and all that stuff. And you know, you, you've almost got the entire thing put together and they're showing you mounting the motor and all that. So then we step over to gate four. Well, now we're in the frickin' front suspension build. I don't see any suspension there, so, you know, good QC on that, guys. And right here, it's hard to see, but, you know, 18 tooth pinion gear. 
So another weird thing I noticed, this is the assembly step for the front axle. Everything is laid out, you know, part, 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 screws. That's nice. And then you come over here, you're sliding the bearing in and then you're putting the caps on and you have to align the little arrows. This is a very well laid out step. I can see all the parts going into the thing. But you move over to the rear end and they reverse the view. I don't understand the logic of reversing that view. Now, granted, if you've done the front, you should be able to do the rear. But there are some people that aren't terribly mechanically inclined and may struggle with trying to remember how, you know, which way does this go? And you know, you're, you're distorting the orientation by having to build something that you're looking at it this way, but it's pictured this way. So this step, clear and concise, this step may lead to confusion of somebody putting in the ring, uh, the differential gear in the wrong way around. Potentially. I don't even know if it would actually fit. But, you know, it just, it's one of the idiosyncrasies of this manual that doesn't make any sense to me. Now we move on to the links. The links were fairly straightforward, but you really had to pay attention to the picture and understand which ways the bins were going. And that is somewhat normal in the kits. Well, except the TRX-4 kits, because they're pre-assembled. But I won't go into that again. I will, I promise. So, you know, build a link, build a link, build a link, build a link. And nowhere in here does it say build link to mirror image. It just says build two links. So if you don't know that one link on the left is gonna mirror the link on the right, say this is your first rock crawler kit you've purchased, you're gonna build both of these links the same and then have to figure out that hard truth once you go to install them and you know one side doesn't fit because it's bent the wrong way. Anyway, links, 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 we're into the drive shafts. Drive shafts didn't go together terribly bad. Um, these can be a little bit fiddly, but I never really have any problems putting those together. Um, they assemble pretty much identical to the TRX-4, an axial, whatever. The only thing different is these cups. So on almost all of them, they capture the, the little tiny pin that goes through all of this to keep that pin from falling out. And really all it has to do is hold on to it long enough for you to install it and then there's no way for this collar to move and that pin to fall out. This cup is the axle side. That cup fits onto the shaft, this area up here, nice and firmly and doesn't fall off. This one has enough play, it does not want to stay on it no matter what. So my tip for this, and I had to figure this one out, cut a small little piece of tape and wrap it around to keep it from falling off the damn axle shaft. Because as you're trying to feed this axle shaft, you know, it is not easy to get it lined up and a screw into the transmission. So you're trying to rotate the transmission and you know, get a screw in and you're fiddle farting with this and trying not to keep it from falling apart because you don't want to lose your sink. And next thing you know, that collar falls off and your little pin goes Soop! Cause it's, you know, it's always lined up so it's gonna fall straight out. That little pin goes Soop! and then that pin flies out. This piece comes undone. This thing falls out and rolls across the shop floor. Do yourself some favor and just put a little bit of tape around there until you get it into the truck. Once you get it into the truck and you got that cross pin threaded down in there or at least started in there, then remove the tape. This one, don't have to worry about it. It clips on just like the Traxxas ones do or probably the Axial ones and you know, it stays on. You don't have to worry about it falling off. Another thing I don't understand at all. They made these high precision white Delrin um, pivot balls, right? Selling point of the kit. We've upgraded to these high wear, super precision pivot balls and they work great. In all the links, there's a little bit of play in there, but nothing terrible. But they're definitely hard. They should last a lot longer than um, kind of your standard plastic ones and won't get like galled up like the metal ones will. So I'm not saying these are a bad idea and they work great for the links. And they also work great for the shock bottoms because it's the same material as the links. This top cap is not machined 
for a pivot ball. It is just a borehole. And this long pivot ball is on this. It's included on this little sprue. But this long pivot ball does nothing for this except keep it between this screw, which has a broad head on it, and this washer, which is just a little bit bigger than the opening there. So literally, this shock is just going to go back and forth. There is no pivot ball to this top shock. So, you know, this could have been a chunk of fuel tubing. It, it really didn't matter what that was. I don't understand why they couldn't have cast either a different pivot ball for this specific shock cap or cast a different type of shock cap that would accept a pivot ball. But to use a pivot ball for basically a spacer just makes no sense to me. So that was very confusing and I thought that was a lackluster part of the build. Um, everything else fit and finish wise, perfect. This was the only fit and finish thing that question, that I had questions about. Um, it just confused me a lot. All right, so part um, 11 of the rant. So in this section of the manual, it basically shows all your included parts with the parts blow up and a parts list of all the parts in the kit, you know. Oh, look, hey, way back here, there's a description of the O-rings that have, oh, never mind, the O-rings have the same damn part number, so yeah, that, that doesn't help out either. You know, I saw that didn't help. Um, so you have all your parts for your front axle and your back axle and the trays and the shafts and the mounts and everything. Oh look, what's this? Oh, wheels and tires? Not included? Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Oh, IFS stuff. Oh yeah, that's, that's not included in the kit either. Well, yeah, because it's a straight axle kit. That makes sense. Oh yeah, more IFS stuff and, and more IFS stuff. Yeah, both not included. Okay, yeah, it's, it's not part of the kit. But, curiously, if we go back into the included section, um, oh, what the hell is that? That's a freaking pinion gear. Oh, wait, does it say not included in the kit? Nope, it says 18 tooth, 48 pitch, aluminum pinion, one, in the motor mount section. Isn't that odd? Maybe that's what makes somebody dig through the damn trash and clean up their entire work area for three damn hours looking for it. Someone from Element needs to go buy a TRX4 Sport Kit and walk through their manual. Look how they have their stuff laid out. Look at the big blown up pictures and making sure you have correct orientation. I mean, this is one, two, three, four, five pictures of orientation of two parts to make sure you put bearings in the right holes. You have all your bits and pieces to assemble small, easy to digest areas. You have clear and accurate pictures. What size screws go into what freaking holes? Again, these go here and they're clear pictures, whether you're way out here or you're way up here you can see clearly now the grain is gone oh another awesome thing that they have in every step you have on every single page every single page you have a ruler at the bottom of the page so if you pick up a screw and you're not sure if that's an 8 millimeter or 10 millimeter boom if you're gonna build that element kit go down to Harbor Freight and buy a caliper because in some of their steps there's an 8 there's a 10 there's a 12 there's a 14 and there's a 16 millimeter screw and when you've used the 16s and the 12s and the 8s you know it's really hard to figure out what screws you have left so you're gonna be using this crap a lot so in the Traxxas book you have a picture of the link you have the measurements of the link this is a one-to-one -one image of the link so this is 133 millimeters center of eye to center of eye. So again, 133 millimeters. And then we come down here and this is 137 millimeters. Um, yeah, that's, that's not to scale. That's nowhere near scale. Why is it to scale? Because I guess they didn't want to use up this white space over here. You know, these links are pre-made for you. 
and you still have a one-to-one -one picture in this manual. This manual, you have to assemble every link and measure it your damn self. Tracks and shocks, nowhere near as complex and leak proof as the ones that came with the Enduro. They have a smaller body, probably don't work as well, but you know, the only thing you have to do with these shocks when you get them is put the oil in it and put the springs on it. The shock is assembled. Unlike that one where you have to figure out which freaking O-ring goes where based off of, you know, multiple guess. All right, guys, so I said I didn't want to make this a comparison video, but I feel like I kind of have to because I just built this kit and I just built this kit. So I feel they are both assembly kits. They are both single speed trucks. There's no bells and whistles on here. And, you know, they're almost identical, except for, you know, the way things are laid out, you know, different transmissions and, and stuff. Same wheelbase, same everything. Element, $249.99. Traxxas, $299.99. So what do you get different between the two trucks? The Element has better shocks. No doubt about it, I'm sure they're better shocks. Traxxas has just basic bare bones, Aluminum shocks, they're nice, they're aluminum body, adjustable collars, you know, they're not crap, but they're not anything to write home about. Um, element, sealed radio box, sealed ish. Um, it's a big clunky radio box, you know, I, I, I assume it's going to be rather weatherproof. Tracks a sealed weather, weatherproof box. I know you can basically drive around submerged with these without issue. Um, you know, as far as wheelbase, same wheelbase out of the box, 12.3. Um, Traxxas includes bumpers. Oh, includes bumpers with D-rings. Um, what else? Oh, Traxxas gives you tires. Oh, and Traxxas gives you wheels. These aren't the wheels that come on there. They're just black plastic wheels. But it comes with wheels and tires. Oh, Traxxas gives you a body. So... For 300 bucks, you get a body, you get wheels and tires, so essentially once you build it um, and put all that stuff on there, you can go drive. For 250 you know, you still gotta buy wheels and tires, and a body, and bumpers, and Lord knows what rear bumper goes on this thing because it's not a standardized bumper. Oh, and you know, with the body for Traxxas, you know, with the Sport, you also get, you know, the cool, like, exo cage type back rack and, and, and accessories because, you know, you get the sand ladders and there's fuel tanks and, you know, shovel and, and stuff to go in here. So, you know, it, it already has scale points with it for 300 bucks. Oh, and with this, you get free toilet paper. Um, with the Traxxas, you get a really, really good user manual and a website that's easy to navigate and customer service you can get a hold of and support for their products. Maybe? I, I don't know. I haven't seen it, so I can't tell you. Um, so yeah, comparatively, I would recommend a TRX4 Sport all day over this. You will probably find countrywide better support for the Traxxas than an Element. And if they don't up their game and make things easier to do and, you know, more appealing, and people aren't putting out cool happy videos about their stuff and they're putting out videos like this saying, I'd probably buy that. Um, I don't see how they're gonna gain much traction, but, well, they can't gain traction because their crap doesn't come with wheels and tires. Sorry, cheap shot, had to. All right, guys, I did not intend this to be a comparison video of the TRX4 Sport Kit and this Element Enduro Kit, but I have a reasonable amount of experience with building the TRX4 platforms. I've done two sports. I've done two full TRX4 builds with the, um, you know, the, the locking front rear differentials, the two-speed transmission. I would build four of those complicated, you know, multi-speed transmissions and locking front and rear differentials and cables and servos and all that before I'd want to build another one of these kits, honestly. I don't know whether this kit will outperform this kit or not, but as an RC car enthusiast, I'm not out here to, you know, 
win championships. I'm not going to be sponsored by anybody. I build kits because I love building kits. And when you take all the fun out of building a kit, then why build a kit? Just buy a ready to run and, and break it and then figure out how to fix it. I, I really don't understand why they put all the time and effort into building a new version of an existing kit, upgrading a lot of the parts that either people ask for or parts that were needed to be upgraded, and then you completely ignore the assembly instructions. You can make the best kit in the world, but if you give them crap IKEA instructions and it's the most frustrating thing in the world to build, you're not going to love that truck. No matter how well it performs, I'm always going to hate that truck. This thing was a joy to put together. The instruction manual for a TRX-4, it seems to be just like almost idiot proof. I will admit, you know, I have put the, the left and right knuckles on the front end of this thing backwards probably more than one time in the, in the years I've been building these kits. Or, you know, a, a link in the wrong era, area. Um, you're gonna make mistakes building a kit. It's just by nature. But this is a $100 kit. And the instruction manual from that was probably written somewhere around 1986. And the instruction manual for this is stellar compared to the garbage that Element put out. And please, don't think I'm bashing on Element and Associated. I, I, Associated has been around forever. They have put out tremendous vehicles. Element is putting out some really, really great vehicles. I am giving them so much crap about this manual because they didn't even try. They basically copy and pasted an old manual changed a few pictures around to incorporate all the new pretty links that we installed and the shocks that we put on it and then left all the other garbage behind. So I did not want to put out this video until I talked to somebody at Element. And I know I'm a piddly dink little RC car channel on YouTube, but I felt like I needed to reach out and ask, hey, is there somebody I can talk to about your instructions because you know they leave a lot to be desired and um, I also at the same time asked about the pinion gears because I don't understand why you don't put pinion gears in a ready to run or in a in an assembly kit when you know you have a standardized gearing why would you not put the standardized pinion in the kit so when I submitted my ticket to um, actually it was associated because if you go to Element RC, basically the only thing you can do is download a form and fax it in about issues you're having. Um, I actually had to go to Associates website and you know kind of cross link over and find a form where I could fill out stuff. Um, nowhere in here gives you a good information. They give you a customer service number, and I got Bob's voicemail twice. You know, I don't think I, I needed to be talking to Bob necessarily, but maybe I should have talked to Bob because maybe Bob could have explained some stuff to me. But regardless, um, I submitted the, the ticket online. The, the, the preface of it was, hey, I, I'm missing pinion gears and your instruction manual leaves a lot to be desired. I would really love to speak with somebody at Element about you know correcting some of the stuff in the manual because you know there's a lot of steps in there that A, are incorrect, B, don't seem to be very clear, and you know, I have a strong confusion points about certain things in these steps why aren't and you know a whole laundry list of concerns and I get a response back the next morning of a one-line sentence of yeah we do not include pinging gears in the assembly kits and I'm like well that was that was um, not very informative and helpful but okay thank you and then followed by that your ticket has been closed out we hope that this has re resolved your problem satisfactorily, or whatever. I don't even remember the exact words, but, you know, completely blew me off. So, I did reach out to Element to try to talk to somebody, anybody, about these issues before I posted this video. In the submission, I said, I am doing a build video on this car. I would like to submit it, but I don't want to upload it until I talk to somebody. And then they blew me off. So... Here's the video about me smashing the crap out of their assembly manual because I think this is garbage. You can see all the Tamiya cars behind me. Half of these instruction manuals were written in the 80s or early 90s. 
and they are leaps and bounds clearer and more understandable than this. The TRX-4 manual is like the Bible compared to this. The, this assembly manual was a, sim it was a simple set of IKEA instructions of exploded parts diagrams and, you know, good luck. Um, I am not a fan of building that truck. And if you guys are an Element um, truck owner and you think they're great, like I said, I sure, I'm sure they are. Once you have it built, I'm sure that's a great truck. Again, I, I wouldn't want to drive it now. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I have ranted enough. And again, like I said in the beginning, these are my views. This is my opinion of how my experience went with that. Kind of versus this. Um, like I said, I built multiple uh, TRX-4s before. But again, I'm not an expert. I can't blindly put one of these together. I could probably put most of it together, but you know, I still have to refer back to the manual to figure out things and to make sure I'm doing things right. Um, this, I don't, I, I got no good words for it. I'm sorry. Honestly, I recommend if you are to get this truck, use these instructions as a supplement to the online instructions for the original one, because you can't find these instructions at Element yet. They have yet to put these up on their website, which I think is also stupid as hell. Use the paper instructions to make sure you're doing it correct for this kit, well, this kit, and use the other instructions. Bring your laptop out to, laptop out to the garage and have it, because you can clearly see it much clearer on the computer than you can in this little um, manual. It's terrible. All right, guys, I am hoping my next video is much more upbeat and much more fun. I feel like this was a big rant session. I didn't want it to be a big rant session, but you know, I'm passionate about RC. I love building kits. And this one sucked the life out of me trying to build it. Like, I just wanted to get done with it. I didn't, I didn't, I, it's, that's the only thing. I don't even want to run it. I just wanted to be done with it so it's out of my life. Um, again, the truck itself, great. I am sure it's tough as nails. The instruction manual, you know, emergency toilet paper. Uh, it's terrible. All right, guys, everybody out there, be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I'll catch you guys next time, hopefully with a little bit happier video. Catch you guys later. Bye.